Good thing to tu peux me tenir le micro deux secondes. I need a microphone holder. No, where where my mouth is? Where yeah, it's your mic. So, and I think I know why. It's augmented sound when it's up. For whatever reason, it's not bad For that reason, I call it sabotage. Sabotage. German with the French always doing some twisted stuff at the end. It's a good thing your mic is not on. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be in trouble for that. I think we should hear you now. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay. I said the German and the French. Or uh, no, sorry, I did so not. So hold the mic again for like a minute, for like a ten seconds. A uh, quick little tip which I discovered a couple of uh, like like uh, two days ago is if you have a lot of screens like I do right now, uh, three screens, and you want only two of those to mirror, but not the third one, you hold um, a command and you drag. Uh, uh, and it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> and our shift is it shift? Option. option. Thank you. Thank you. Option on one of each other, and then you only have two mirroring and not the third one. So which is which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Now the not so awesome part of it is it's the confusing UI of having this checkbox saying mirror displays, because it actually doesn't really because one of the display is not mirror. It should be like a minus or whatever. Anyway, file a radar or get the fuck out. Um, there, there is kind of a tradition at uh, Objective Cologne and, and SwiftConf, which we almost uh, uh, left this year, which is to always have some kind of frog on stage. Um, and so there is always a French guy on stage at one point. Uh, yeah, a frog. A French guy. <laughs> Right? That's a way to put it. Uh, uh, no, we don't eat frogs. Um, we eat fries. Starts with the two same letters, but there's no. Is it online? Working on it. Uh, you're working on it. Uh, yeah, I'll show you at the next break. And so, yeah, this year, um, as you know, Paul Hudson uh, couldn't make it. Um, so um, I uh, basically did what I do when I need to find a, a, a very talented um, French speaker. I asked Franck, <laughs> and I was writing to Franck and uh, asked him, so who would you know? And one of the guys he mentioned is, is here. And uh, I had seen you actually at .swift. And not only had I seen you, but we also had dinner after. And it was very funny, so I was sure, like, I don't know if it's going to be any technical, but it's going to be fun <laughs> by any means. So let's uh, have a round of applause and let's hear about ARKit. Thank you. So, uh, well, thank you to get me here. Uh, so I'm going to talk today about uh, ARKit in a kind of a different ways from what you may have already seen. If anybody has seen the haha -ha, take on me video or whatever, like when they do AR, forget about that. I'm not going to show you any of that. It's not going to be like, create. it's about UI in ARKit. So we, I mainly are a UI developer for iPhone and how can you be a UI developer with the AR? So my name is Hugues bernard Holland. Here's my Twitter and my GitHub. I'm a freelancer iOS developer, and I've been working mainly, I mean, a little while now with iOS, but mainly recently on uh, BLE and Bluetooth technology, which I think can also overlap a bit with AR at one point. So let's see what we're going to talk about. So we're going to have a brief overview of AR uh, technology. How does it work, briefly? And uh, the main classes, the main the framework, the main classes that you're going to use when you work with AR kit. Then we're going to talk about like two ways to use ARKit. There's multiple ways. Uh, today it's going to be SpriteKit and SyncKit because basically AR is about like building a virtual a world, a virtual space in the world. So there's multiple ways you can bring this uh, virtual space. We will talk about SpriteKit and SyncKit. And after we'll go over 
same thing if the god of demo are with us. But like two, not one, two UI demo, so one of them not going to work. And uh, then we want to go over some limitation, taking consideration that ARKit is really, really an early framework. And actually, it's, it should not work right now on iOS. It's pretty incredible that Apple have made it work. So it, it is limited. And that's big limitation for now to be taken in consideration. And then after, we'll just quickly review if you want to do more of our AR, ARKit, where you can, uh, where you can go. So quick uh, overview of the technology. So they use something called visual inertia odometry, iner uh, inertial odometry, which is basically like taking an image and trying to make sense of it, what this image means into the world. So if you have only one image, it's pretty hard. But what they do is they try to find little point that they think were the same point when you just move a little bit your phone, like just holding it like that, you're already moving. If you have Parkinson, it works way better. And the thing is, like, they will try to say, like, well, how was here? I saw that point. I move a tiny little bit. I saw that point again with, with a little difference. Then it probably means it's two meters away from me in this direction, and so on and so on. So for that, they couple it with the inertial measurement unit, which is basically all the core motion thing, the accelerator or whatever. So they can know how the phone moves. And based on that, they can try to find what the world is. How is it? And there's another thing that is more about like core ML, which is called dead reckoning. It's basically making a guess. So let's say you move your phone like this, before the calculation and all the core motion data have been processed, they're trying to make a guess. Well, I guess that's what it's, it is now. So that's in order to be really fast and still continue render, rendering without dropping frame. So that's the one that something go fucked up and like you, all this, can we say fucked up? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. The French, and, uh, and uh, they're trying to make a guess what it is. And so all of that bring you what they call a, a 6D model. It's not a word from Apple, even if they're probably going to patent it. It's more like about like AR and SLAM technology, which is about like building AR world. And it means you have a 6D, so you do something like this. Don't forget one of the fingers, otherwise it look weird. And that means there is a translation in the three direction, so 3D. But there's also rotation in the three direction. So that's why they call it a 6D model. So based on that, it's mainly like a transform that tells you where you are and where is that feature point in the world. Some of the AR kit unique feature compared to other framework, they all, I mean, like other technology like OLLens or whatever. They do 2D plane detection. So far, it's only limited to horizontal plane, so the ground, not the wall, not vertical plane which is already kind of pretty neat if you try to put stuff in the real world. They do metric scale, which allow you to have basically like to say like, well, I want to put an object and I want this object to have be one meter uh, wide. Well, it's just you give it one and it's one meter wide. So the unit is meter and it's really convenient if you deal with real world object. Light estimation, as you probably all have seen in the keynote and state of the union, which is basically like trying to make your object sit fit in the scene as if it was part of the scene. So they're going to try to render it as if the lighting was the real lighting. And finally, one of the main for me feature of, about AR, because I'm not a 3D developer, uh, is the easy integration with SpriteKit and SyncKit, which like those framework are pretty basic for what you want to do in AR. It's really easy to learn. And you can already do so much without going into like big like Unity and AR, like uh, real AR, AR component. Of course, you can use Metal and other like custom renderer, but that will not be part of the talk. So uh, ARKit. So the main classes of ARKit, there, there is not a lot, actually. There's AR system configuration that uh, is the way for you to tell to the device what you want to do. There's two main kind of AR, which is like, I want a world space, which is I'm here and I want to just put an object three meters away in that direction, which is the most convenient, uh, the most easy one to do. And it doesn't require, uh, uh, it require less uh, capabilities of the device, so it will work on more devices. Uh, and even like if the image is a poor quality, it will still work with low, lower lighting and so on. Then there's a world, world tracking, which is the one we talked about, with, for example, plane recognition or whatever. And that's a, just another setting that you would say like to uh, the ARKit framework, I also want this. So we will see how to do that. The AR station is basically the beast of AR. We will process all the frame that come from the camera, 
merge it with the core motion and try to make sense of where is the world. And it will put like some kind of world, something we will see just after, which are called anchor, which will give them like 3D spaces, 3D point into the world. AR frame we just talked about is like, it's just a frame of the camera, but that is processed in order to make sense of what they have seen. Taking consideration toward what we were saying before with visual odometry or inertia, visual odometry, you will not have a lot. You have 30 frames per second, roughly. But core motion, you can have 1,000 1, measure per second. So that's where the AR frame combined to the AR station can go really fast in order to process all those information. The AR anchor, as we say, is basically you can have a, a lot. It's basically a point in the real world, in the real space, that AR, will, AR kit will track for you. So once you find this point, you will attach stuff to it. You will build a 3D scene or a sprite kit scene, and then you're almost done because ARKit will do, when you move around, it will do all the transformation that need to be applied to that specific anchor to still mean the same thing in the world. So now I just three meter away instead of two meter, well, ARKit take all the math, do all the math for you. So go a little a bit uh, bigger into, uh, further into each classes. So as I say, manage the R processing, rather the tracking, which is also important because that's one big issue with ARKit for now is like, if for example, somebody call you or you quit your app or whatever, well, you just lost the world, basically. So if, if like your phone is moving and like I said, you lose at one point, you have to reset the session and all the anchor don't mean anything anymore because they don't have a real notion of where they could be passed from before. So that's one way you can reset the tracking also. Or like if, for example, you have lower condition, light, uh, less light or so on, well, you will reduce what you wanted. You don't want the plane detection anymore. You just want the real space. And session update, it's uh, through a delegate, of course. ARKit will call you back each time you process a new frame, and that's an opportunity to, for you to do some work, for example. After the AR frame, as we say, like, it's basically like just a camera image background. So it, it will be displayed in the AR session. It's not necessarily mandatory. You could say, like, I don't want to display the background image. That would be a weird AR experience. But that's where uh, the point's going to be, or the tracking location, the sand estimate, and so on. So taking consideration the fact that the camera, that's how it's facing. Like, the Z is, in fact, the plus Z is behind you, and the, min the minus Z is in front of you. So we will see. It could be like weird sometimes to think about that. But. AR anchor, so that's basically the only thing you care about AR kit because it will be like once you find a point in the world, whether it's a physical point based on the real world, like a plane, or just a space point, an AR anchor contains all the transform, the rotation, the translation, and so on. So you will attach something to it, and you don't, and they mainly manage all of the, of, all of the transformation after are managed by AR kit. So you don't move anchor. You try to find them, they're given to you by the system, and after you can position an element relative to that anchor. Okay? And so ARKit can also create some anchor for you, like when you do plane detection, because it will tell you like, well, instead of just saying, oh, I want an anchor two meters away from my camera at this orientation, ARKit will tell you like, well, I find a plane, that's where the, uh, the anchor of the middle of that plane. And after you can put object at this position or another translation and so on. So that was a really, really, really brief overview of ARKit, but it's almost all you have to know about ARKit. After, it's more about the two other uh, frameworks that we're going to talk about, which are SpriteKit and SyncKit. So they have been introduced a little while ago. Once again, I'm not a game or 3D developer, so I haven't really played with it like before, like recently. But for what you're going to do in AR, like you only need to know like 5 10% of the framework, and already you can do pretty much everything you will do in UI kit with obviously less synthetic sugar already there. But like position content, interact with this content, move the content, do action, and so on. Uh, the difference between the two of them, 2D, 3D, Sprite kit can be a bit weird in AR because, well, we live in a 3D world and Sprite kit is 2D, so how is it renderer? It's not necessarily the best yet, but we'll see that there's some ways to hack around it to make it seem like a 2D scene in a 3D world. So we're going to start with uh, SpriteKit because I think it's the easier one to jump in. And also, if you want to build UI, 
I mean, I haven't seen that many great 3D UI, but I've seen amazing 2D UI. And so that's what we're going to focus a little bit uh, to start with. Uh, so Sprite Kit, a little primer. So same thing, obviously, there is a, everything is SK, Sprite Kit, uh, SK View, which is just a subclass of a UI view. And it can be really convenient also because, well, it's a UI view, so you can put control in it if you want. But it's also the one that all a reference to the scene, which is where all your drawing, your sprite kit drawing, going to happen. The scene itself uh, is a, the root node of all the elements. So we're going to see after a bit more what is a node. But basically, like that's the main, the first reference from where all your point going to be positioned. So you have your, your scene, which is like the middle of the world. And after your position related to it, and after you can put position related to this one, but at the end they're all related to that root node, which is the scene. And it's also the scene who hold all that nodes tree. The node for Sprite Kit is just basically a reference point. In this case, a 2D point that say like, well, I'm at this position and three and two from here. That's all what it is. And obviously you have a bunch of subclasses to display sprites, so image, text, and so on and so on. There's a bunch of other class in Sprite Kit that we will not necessarily explore fully, but we're just going to mention them. SK Action, which is like, it's a way to say like, well, I want to do that kind of movement on a node. You programmatically say like a translation, a rotation, even if for Sprite Kit it's not necessarily in 3D, and so on. And then after you can combine, it's like a CR, uh, if you know like say uh, car animation, it's kind of the same ID, and you can repeat them, you can group them, you can chain them, you can sequence them, and so on. Transition, same thing. It's not necessarily useful for AR, but it's, you can have multiple scenes. So if you were in a, in a Sprite Kit game, you can have one scene for the intro, then you transition to your game, and then you transition to the next level, and so on, and so on. You can do that, obviously, also in Sprite Kit, but for the UI that we're going to talk about, it's not necessarily required. And texture, just apply a texture to uh, one of your nodes. After Apple, because it's their framework, I've give you like uh, the same thing as a UI table view controller, which is a table view and a UI view controller merged together. They gave you a uh, AR SK view, which is basically an SK view with already a session in it. Honestly, I have nothing better than that really. Do that it's already like set up for you, but it's still a good like convenient things to use. And like all the model of uh, Apple, all the example of Apple are built on that. So don't be surprised if you see the class stuff. It's nothing else than the merging of those two things. And after we just talked about like anchor the node, well, the main point, the main game in ARKit is to link the two. So ARKit will give you an anchor that either you have found or either you decide to say it's at this position. And after you are going to associate an anchor with an SK node, which is, can be a sprite, can be the root scene, can be a, another element to add to it. And that's how you build your scene. After, the anchor will change in terms of transformation and rotation that need to be applied. And ARKit will update the node that are attached to it. And that's pretty much it. So if the god of demo are with us. Well, I'm just going to show you that the next screen was demo. Sorry. Uh, and so, yeah. So, left, right. Ah. Can I can I do this thing full screen? That's not necessarily going to do any. A little bit better. So I just broke my phone coming here. I'm actually going to sue Seven for them. Um, I hope seven principal is going to pay for it. But uh, so the UI, the touch gesture, I just tried it. And like it seems to work, but if it doesn't, we will see. So we're going to start right away. I hope you see you all. And if things work, hello. So you will have overlay a bunch of photo of my daughter and my son. Just FYI, the best game we have with my uh, daughter is actually to make fun of, see, that's uh, her little brother, and she just put a weird hat. It's actually her pants on her head. And so I was thinking, like, okay, that's how I can explore all my portfolio. So that's one scene here that I see, and I can go through and 
based on the camera's position, I can like change the size of the image to see it a little bit more better. But I also have another one here. So we'll, the same photo, but you can imagine it will be different photo. And also I can have another one here. You could have one in the back, wherever. So here, what I do is like, I have my sprite kit scene, but I use many my phone as a controller to say like, what am I doing? What am I overlighting? It's not anymore you touch, it's your eyes or your phone acting as a controller. And we will see after how to do that, but they're still like touchable. So here I'm gonna touch this beautiful photo of my daughter because it's a main one, but I could touch somewhere else. For example, here or here or here at other part that I'm not highlighting on the, on the screen and it still work. And it will see why it work, but it's pretty, I mean, it's just a touch event. So if you know UI kit, you already know almost everything to do what I just did. So good, this demo worked. That's a good thing. And I don't know where is my mouth. Oh, yeah. That's really hard to do, actually. Yeah. I'm going to move that back. Doop, doop, doop. And are you working? Great. So that was a tiny a demo about sprite kick capabilities that I just Actually, I had another one, and I just built it during lunch and a bit before. So it was an hour and some change. So it's really easy to, uh, to work with it. So what are the different steps uh, to use uh, uh, ARKit with SpriteKit? So as we said, the first thing is to position your content using an anchor. So you get an anchor from the system, or you position it an anchor relative to the camera, that's the first step. For Sprite Kit, it's a bit weird. You don't put directly content. You do put, you add an anchor to the session that you say, track me that thing. All around now, from now and ever, I want you to track that thing around the world. And after, you will have a callback through the delegate saying like, oh, I have an anchor. What do you want me to put here? So you say, well, I have a node. And a node can be a scene, can be a node with sub, sub node. And sun, so it could be like all that, image that you saw was with all the different images was just one big node with a bunch of little nodes. Same thing, after I did a transformation, so I had one anchor that was two meters away from me, and I apply a transformation, a rotation to put it here, and I put another anchor. Put it here, I put another anchor, and I got my three main nodes that contain all the different images. After you wanna, obviously, it's better, interact with your content. So, we will see a bit, but like SpriteKit is pretty efficient for that. That's why like a lot of developer, have, especially uh, UIKit developer, have enjoy playing with it. Which is, um, it's it just uh, it just a UI responder, the uh, the, SK, the SK node. So it's actually begin touch will work with it. You can add gesture to it. It's, I mean, there's nothing. There's really nothing else to do. We will see it's a bit more complicated for SyncKit, but for SpriteKit. You, you know how to do UI and UI kit? Well, you know how to use Sprite kit, then for you, you know how to use AR kit. So, end of the talk, goodbye, almost. The camera position is interesting because it's, it's a new UI, it's a new uh, UI interaction. So by moving my, my phone around, I'm actually saying something to the system. I'm saying like, well, I wanna know more about that element. That was just the way I highlight one of the content by make it grow. But I still have the phone in my hand. So I could say like when now I, when I apply a gesture, which is a pinch, a pan or whatever, well, it could apply to the element that was focusing. So you actually combine two interaction within a same experience. The moving of the device and the touching of the screen that is actually like interacting with the content that you've decided is the one that interests your user. And after you just convert point back and forth. So we'll see, but AR kit and scene kit uh, sprite kit, sorry, uh, give you like convenience method to transcribe a point to say, well, I touch the screen here. What does that mean for my scene? And then for which node did I touch? If you don't want to use UI responder or if it's a different type of interaction. And that's all. AR kit will do the rest. So if any of you know sprite kit, so which probably said like, that's wrong what he said. That's not at all how it works. Well, sorry. Uh, well, then you're good because with what we just saw before, the anchor, whatever, and with that, that's really all you have to do. 
So let's see a bit about uh, a bit more about the code. So here I declare uh, I'm going to try something. I'm going to do something silly, which is I want to fix screen position. So nothing to do with AR. I want to put something on the screen, not in the world. So you could. That's the second one. You could just put a UI classes because we saw that SK view is a UI view. Then for you can put a classes. You can put a label. You can put a touch. You get a button. You can put whatever you want. It will work because it's a UI view. You can also because it's still sprite kit. You can also add any node to the scene element. But here you haven't given AR kit any clue about where in the physical world you wanted to put that element. So that element is not in the world, it's in your screen. So that's how I did the little red, red and blue, was it blue? Yeah, blue circle that was highlighting which content I wanted to focus on. It's just a point in the middle of the screen. By default, the uh, anchor point, which is not to be mixed up with the AR anchor, which is basically where the content is going to be positioned from in a scene by default on the screen is in the middle of the screen, so you will have a blue circle in the middle of the screen. Not really AR, but still good to know. After, how do you put uh, content relative to your camera current position? Well, here you need, a, you, need, you need information about the camera. So first of all, you need to be sure that the session has started. That's what we talked earlier about the fact that the session have a delegate that can inform you what it is doing. So it will tell you like, well, I'm starting to detect some stuff. When you detect some stuff, you add some frame. When you have some frame, the frame also have a camera which contains all the information about where this camera is in the world, in its space, more to say. Once you have that, so here, I get the camera from the current session, the current frame, I get the camera uh, object. After, that's where there's a bit, there's not math, but there's a bit of things that do math. So you build a, a 4D matrix, a 4 by 4 matrix, which is basically, we're not going to talk about matrices here, but like if you know about it, it's basically a way to apply transforms to things. You can do rotation, translation, and so on and so on. So here we build an identity matrix. Then this matrix, we say now you're not anymore an identity ma matrix, you're a translation matrix. We want on the Z, Z axis that you go backward from one meter. I didn't say any units, but in Sprite Kit, in AR Kit, it's meta we talked about. So it's one meta. And it's not backward, as I say. In fact, it's in front of you. I don't know why the, why the heck they will have done that. But it's in front of you. And it's, yeah, you know, you do the three thing. Yeah, the, yeah, whatever. The other finger. So then after I create uh, my transform by multiplying those matrix, I take the camera matrix, which is here, right? It contains all the information about where I am, where this camera is in the space, and I apply my matrix information that say, now you, tran you translation one meter away from the camera. So now I have a transform, a, a matrix that contains all those information, and I can create an anchor for it. I will create manu manually, that there's the anchor, and I will add it to the session. From now on, until I remove it, AR kit, each time the camera move, each time your phone move around, will do all the math to update, update where is that thing based on where you are now, which is not that complicated. You move this, 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 well, you apply this translation, this rotation, and so on and so on, on this anchor. And you don't add the content right away. It's kind of weird how, but whatever, in Sprite, you don't add it right away. You just add the anchor point for your content. Then after you have a delegate that will call you back with a view and with the anchor that was added. And now you return a node that air kit will attach to that anchor. Okay? So in that case, that was just a label. And the result, it's not really clear, is this little yellow word in the middle of the screen, one meter away from me. And if I move the camera around, it will stay where it was until I come back to it. You may wonder, like, well, what if I have more than one yellow word and a lot of things? Well, then anchor, I have identifi identifier like you, uh, UID or whatever. And then for you can find your little guy and say, oh, that was the anchor for this content or whatever, which still seems weird. But you can even do more, which is most, most of the time you will actually have one anchor here, and all you've seen will be based on that anchor point, because you can also apply 
retransform on it, and so on. Hope it's clear. After, uh, and we didn't saw that in this demo about SpriteKit, but you can put element in the real world, not in the real space around my camera, but the real world, so the plane, for example. Hopefully, Apple will see about the release, but we'll do more, but we can hope that they will do like vertical plane detection, furniture, other things, but that will allow you to position it content on other type of real world object. For now, you only have plane. So how do you do that? So here I take, uh, assume that we had a gesture on the screen, we touch, and as you were to do in any other view, you convert. So you do like, oh, what was the location of my touch in my scene? You're gonna get a location, which is a 2D location still, right? Then after you have a, a convenience made out of uh, the scene, uh, the uh, AR scene that will allow you to, uh, the SK scene, that will allow you to do a heat test. So basically what you're saying here is like, if I had that point A on my phone, I want to project a ray toward the infinite, and I want to see if it cut anything on its way to the infinite. And if it cut a plane, then our kid will tell you, yeah, yeah, he do cut something. Here's the anchor that it cut, or all the anchor that it cut, because it can be multiple. You can have different scene, the one after the one after the one, or different drawn even because you can have that chair and the, you can have that table and the ground here, for example. So here we take the first one, same thing, we add an anchor, and we return a node for that anchor that say hello world. Now that little hello world is on the ground, which is just over there next to that guy. And it's still there, I think. And the thing is like, you will notice that on the heat test, you, are, you can add, uh, you can pass also some type, which is basically you can say like, well, I want to try to find object that cut and our existing plane, we'll see in a second what that means, existing plane. Existing plane with extend. So the difference is like AR, uh, ARKit will detect a plane and they can do what they call infinite plane. So for example here, as you can see the, the ground stop, I hope you can see that. And they will extend it as if you were going like up to Cologne. So you could put an object on that plane in Cologne if you want, if that's what you want to do. You can put an object 300 meter away, but on that plane. So that's the difference between extent and not extent. Extent means, well, I want to limit it to what AR could know, that that room. Ex uh, not extent means like, well, I don't care, I could put it at the infinite. So it will cut, if I put uh, not extend, it will cut even here. If I put extend, well, it will not cut if I try to cut in the void, in nothing. After, you can also cut with existing anchor that you already put. So as we saw before, you can add an anchor like three meters away from here or here and here. And after, you try and try to refine them. I haven't really found the use case right now, but I haven't looked more than that. But the question is like, uh, well, where does that plan, like existing plan, come from? Because it didn't exist just a second ago. So remember when I was talking about the AR session configuration and the different mode you can start it in, the world space or the real world space? Well, when you put the real world space, right away, AR kit analyze all your frame and say, well, if, do I find something that looks like a plane? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I find something. And he called you back. And he said, I created an anchor for you that is the anchor of the center, the middle of that plane. You have nothing to do. You don't even have to set up the delegate. It just created for you because you did plane de detection. You probably want to set up the delegate to know that, oh, the plane is detected, so now I can try to do a hit test uh, against existing plane. Because if you do that, and the plane is not yet detected, well, the result is going to be empty. Uh, after, when they give you back the anchor, you could try also to do something else as soon as they detect it. You don't have to try to cut it again. So for example, you detect a plane and right away, you want to put lava on the ground to do a lava game with your child that some people may have seen also in another AI kit demo. So that's uh, the little secret about those existing plane, existing XN plane and so on. After, as I was saying, so now we all position all the content, beautiful photo, lava, and stuff in Cologne. Now, how do we interact with the content? Well, as I was saying, like SpriteKit, uh, all the SpriteKit nodes, so the SK node, are UI responder. So they have touch begin, and that's all. It doesn't matter where this object is in your scene. If you can see it with your phone, you tap on it, well, the event is trigger. So interaction is pretty straightforward. 
uh, regarding Sprite Kit and R Kit, which was a bit more complicated to say it costs more money to develop, but not really. The only thing is like you have to activate the ease user interaction and label, otherwise it will not work, and that's probably worth like a thousand bucks more. After, how do you interact with content in other way? Well, same thing, you can have tab gesture. You could have tab gesture attached to the SK node, but it's more like here in this scenario, I wanna say like, well, I have a gesture, same thing, I try to get the location uh, in my scene, and after that uh, method just after, which is scene.node at location, is a sprite kit method. Because already this uh, point exists in the sprite kit world, so you say, find me all the nodes that are at this specific location, even if they're behind or whatever, they will give you in the Z order, so the first that are closest to, toward you, and then you can start to process this, like make it like twist around, grow as we saw before. And as I show in the demo, one of the last interaction you can do with ARKit and SpriteKit is with a device. So here, when I first wrote that, I was like, is that the right way to do it? Because session did update is each time there's a new frame coming in. Each time like there's a new frame took from the camera, processed by our kit, you'll be called back here, which means like 30 times a second. And roughly. And so, yeah, it's fine. Like, I mean, he's doing like a thousand more processing in the background for the call motion or whatever, so it's fine. And here, like what I get is like I just pick up the center of my view, of my device screen view, and I say to convert that point to a scene location. So it will say, from the device, I'm going in my sprite kit world and I'll try to find the location, that point that is in the middle of my device screen. And then I use the same method from before, which is give me all the nodes, that is specific location. And after in the little dot, 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 that's why I say, well, those node need to be scaled up a bit bigger and that's how that photo grew or shrink as soon as I moved on. And so that's all for sprite kit. Uh, the last thing is like there's a couple of limitation, which is it's once again it's a 2D model. So I was showing like I have one scene here with all those photos, and then I move and I see another one with a bunch of the same photos. I really like my children. Well, I wish I could just like say like this one is a bit tilted because I want to do like a circle around me. Well, that's Sprite Kit. That's not Scene Kit. That's 2D, not 3D. Yeah, but I'm in a 3D world, but yeah, but that's still 2D. So there is something called SK Transform in Sprite Kit, which technically allow you to do like some kind of 2.5D transformation. Don't, don't fuck around with that, because what that means is like you will apply a transform, and each time the camera moves, this transform don't mean anything anymore. The angle is not the same, everything has changed. So we'll reapply all the transform to mimic some kind of 3D stuff. Well, guess what? There's Scene Kit for that. So stop trying to push further sprite kit, just go with scene kit. So scene kit is a bit more complicated. That's where like this, haha, uh, it's really great that thing like take on me, I have it in my mind now. Uh, uh, it's a 3D framework. So once again, you're gonna do that all the time. You're gonna be like, okay, well, I'm here, but I go there, it's mine. It, it's a bit more hard to wrap your mind around. But for what we want to do, which is just basic AR, the good thing is at least the world is maintained for you by AR kids. So if you develop any kind of 3D scene and you know there's like a, uh, some editor in uh, Xcode to put some object in 3D or whatever, you just um, dump that in an AR session at the right anchor, you're done. If you don't have a designer, if you don't have a 3D developer a designer with you, well, you're not done. So, SceneKit Primer, same thing, you have a SN SCN view, which once again is a UI view, so on your screen you can still add control and so on and so on. And then you have a SCN scene, which this class is just a subclass of NS object. It's not an SNC node, but it do contain the root node. And what happened in fact is like when you start a session, the root node is established as your camera. After you start moving around, well, it will maintain all the transformation to that first root node. So if you added something just when the session start, at the point zero, zero, zero in space and no transform or whatever, then as soon as you move around, well, your objects still stay here. 
So your root node is already kind of an anchor. It's the anchor of the start of the camera. And after, same thing that SpriteKit, you should start to be used to it. And that's one of the good things also about SpriteKit and SyncKit. When you learn one, you learn the other one at the same time. Two for one, like girls. Uh, but then you have a uh, SNC node that is the same thing. It's position in space, position, and rotation. So same thing once again. You say, I want to put it here, but it looked like this and like that. OK, that's my node. And it contains this little transform toward itself. It's also a node tree, so you can add another object two point away from here and here and there. There obviously you can, you can put sprite, uh, you can put text, but what you want to really do in 3D is put geometry. So there's two extra classes that you need to know before digging into SyncKit ARKit, which is SCN geometry, which is basically like vertices. In, like, in the 3D world where I want to put a box and I want to put a sphere or whatever and it contain all the vertices of the 3D model. And the vertices by themselves are not really pretty, so normally you add texture or material to them. So it's SNC material, so it could be an image, a color, or whatever you can think about. It can even be like somehow some layers in the back, like CA layer type of thing, but we will not necessarily go into that. So uh, same, ki same thing, SyncKit, IRKit, same thing from Apple. They give you a convenient class. There is AR, AR SynView, which contains a CN It's awful, those words. If I say view, you all understand, right? If I say session, you all understand. So we'll done those prefix. So we contain a view and a session. So once again, it's just a convenience, like table view controller type of things. Uh, and after, for all you anchor, you try to match a node. And once again, once it's done, ARKit will manage all of that for you, all the transformation that needs to be applied. And it's 3D, so it's better because it's a 3D world. And that's pretty much it. Sigan demo. Sigan? Sigan? Yeah, say it like that. Sigan? I don't know where is my thing though. Ouch. Uh, where is my quick time thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with the white. So, Steph MC make me realize something, which is it's 9.41, in case you don't know. We're really early. And I have the Wi-Fi on, and I didn't want the Wi-Fi because my wife have a tendency to send me texts to prove that she loved me. And I don't want you to see those texts, so I put it in uh, airplane mode, and it's still showing up. But no, it's just the fact that QuickTime is on for the demo. It's pretty, yeah, pretty good to know. So, sync it. So, I hope the cable is long enough. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get that thing. Uh, so, when I was in the U.S., I work at. Oh yeah, a cup, great. I'm not giving it back. Huh? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, oh, true. Yeah. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> so, when I was in the US, I worked at a company that was basically doing like exchange between people, like shipping object or whatever. And one of the biggest issues that we had is like we build that awesome flow for people to post item on, but after we say like, what is the size of your item? Is it like? Roughly that, this and that, that's not really convenient to show in an UI. And like if you show a box in an UI, well, that's just on your phone. That doesn't mean shit. So people will always pick the wrong box, which means always pick the wrong FedEx box, which means always having extra cost, which means we will pay for it. And they were actually like probably having like smaller sides just because they wanted us to pay with. So then I thought like, well, if we had AR at the time, what could we do? Well, the first thing we can do is like detect plane, like I say. So here, like I have this little focus square. When it's open, it means you haven't detected a good plane here. And after, it's magically, yeah. So it means like, oh, you have detected a plane. So I'm going to add a little box. So if it worked correctly enough, you can see, okay, that's, that's a box that seems to fit roughly. Yeah, I'm going to move it a little bit around. It could be smaller. Yeah, no, it's not to be good. I oh, don't know, it was too small. I'm going to make it a little bit big. Ah, not too big. And yeah, I'm going to say, well, that's roughly the size of the object that I want to ship. So now I can tap on it and it tell me, oh, well, no, 
You have a fitted box and it's 35 bucks. Cool. I'm going to put my next item. So does this one work? Yep. Same thing. I'm going to put it here. It's in smaller. Yeah, I'm going to really, I'm really going to make it like cheap. 29 bucks. Good. 35, 29. And let's see the cup of coffee. How much that thing will cost to send? Coffee is expensive, true. So I will ship it in a big box. So, ah, uh, oh no, it's too big. Now we can't ship that big of a box, it's all red. No, so I'm gonna make it smaller, smaller, smaller. Broken screen, doesn't work. Seven principal gonna pay for it. 23 bucks. And so what is cool is like my UI is here. I mean, it still stay here. Like, I could like send a bunch of other box and come back to this one and say, no, no, in fact, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw them, I'm going to pay less than that. Yeah, that's better. It's still there. No going back to another view, no going back and forth. Just say like, well, you move around and so on and so on. I could do that for a little bit longer, yeah. but that's going to start to be annoying, I know. So I'm going to stop here. So, oh, with my hand in front of it, perfect. So that was the second demo. Thank you. And so that's what I meant by having like enriched UI, which is it's not necessarily applying applicable to all the scenarios. Like I said, for the sprite kit one, I find like to find better scenario, like I want to attach it on the wall. Well, they don't do vertical detection yet. Shit. I'm gonna put it on the ground, I'm like, nah, it's not gonna be cool to have a new UI on the ground. Not yet. So, you know, you have to think a bit more of some scenarios, and that's why you probably need to work with some designer that can code, you know, because you dump them into ARKit, and I'm sure they're going to appreciate that. But I'm sure you can build, like, interesting UI. Here, obviously, if you relate to the real world, well, it's a given. Like, you should try to relate to the real world. Apple have already published some uh, interface guideline, because they're always ahead of that with like, we want to control what you should do. So they say, for example, well, the AR experience should be a full screen experience. Because you could put it on only half of the screen, that will look really, really weird. But, you know, you could build a mixed up of UI because as we saw, they're all UI views. So you can have control that, oh, well, I can still have my button to say like, ship it, but I put my box here. You can do interesting mixes, but I'm not a designer, as you may have seen by my beautiful design right now. Those boxes were free, by the way, on 3D things, so you have a bunch of 3D content available to you. So if you want to put dinosaur or whatever, like that's pretty easy to do. Like dinosaur boxes that will deliver whatever. Uh, so how to use uh, SyncKit with AR kits? What are the different steps? Well, you're gonna start to get the rhythm here. You position your content using AR anchor. What they are? Well, they're either related to the camera, they're either related to the ground, they're either like invented, you could imagine that, like, say, like, you just need one to do all the transformation to have a bunch of others. Then uh, you add your SK, SK node to it, and the good thing with SyncKit is, like, it's easier to just put them. You don't necessarily have this weird clunky delegate system. Then interact with your content. Here I put UI gesture because I think it's still valid. For example, here, uh, I pinch and I move my boxes around. You may have not seen me touching, but it was not a video, I swear. And what I was doing, it was saying like, well, it's in the field of view of my camera. So that's what my user want to interact with. So from now, all the gesture on the phone were applicable, applicable to this object that was manipulating in the 3D world. So that's why I still put UI gesture here. And all the device uh, field of view or position, like based on what I was doing with the phone, I could, I could have shaked the phone to do stuff, even if it would have probably be a weird thing to do. And then, once again, you convert back and forth between the real world, the SyncKit world, the device, the SyncKit world, and the ARKit world. You convert all those points with those convenience methods. And then, ARKit do the rest. I'm going to press the Apple way. ARKit do the rest. So, once again, let's see some code. So, uh, if you're on a fixed position, which is really not interesting in that case, but for example, that box, well, I create a geometry of a box with a width, a height, and a length. No chamber radius, so no corner, like rounded corner. Uh, oh, wait, it's a really long line after. So basically, like, there's some convenient thing because they say it's a box. You could put the first, the first material and you apply it on all 
the side of your dice or your box, whatever. Then diffuse.content, and here you can put a, content, uh, a color, you could put a layer, you could put a texture. Here I put red, because I'm a designer. And then you create the node, you create the node with that geometry, you position it. Here I position it. Remember, my camera was the source, the root point. So I just put it in the 0 on x, 0 on y, and one, minus 1 on z. So it's just one meter away from my starting point of the camera. Of course, like if the session start like to start and then I move right over there, well, it might not be exactly where I want it to be, but that's the basic idea. And then I, uh, oh, sorry, in this case I did not do that. So you didn't heard what I just said. Okay, she she put, she disturbed me by coming back. So I, uh, you know, thank you. And so I added here like to the point to the scene uh, scene view point of view. So it's actually always updated this point of view to be the point of view of the device, not keeping in the real world, but related to the device. So that box just going to stay in front of you like a square, because it's in 3D, but you just see it from one side like this. Not really fun. You could make it turn. Still not really fun, but good to know. And after, once again, it's a UI label. So the switch comes at the bottom. It's also just a UI label in this view. After relative to the initial position of the camera, so that's what I wanted to say. So you already heard it, kind of. So here I add it not to the field of view, but the root node. And the root node is where my camera started. So now this little plane, like given the sample demo, obviously, I didn't design that plane. Uh, well, it's just going to stay here now forever. So once I start my camera, I put the plane here how much one meter away from me, and after I move, and it still just stay all around here. You look really dumb when you look in the AR presentation, I'm sure. After, relative to the real world, so as we saw with those boxes, I didn't put any content in the space, I put them in the world, in that SyncKit demo. So here, a little, little more code, and I have no idea how much time left, because the counter just fucked up when I, okay. Uh, so ready to the real world. So here, uh, the first thing is like, you set yourself as a delegate of the session. You always want to set up those delegates. There's always good information to get from those. And you set up a configuration. We saying I wanted to take a uh, plane, like horizontal plane, and you start the session. At one point, you will be called back by the delegate uh, of the session, saying, like, hey, hey, I found something. I found an anchor for you. And you check, what is it an AR plane anchor? You sure, you've detected a plane, not a weird other object that you don't detect yet. So yeah, it's a plane, but you still check it. <coughs> and then you know there is a plane. From now on, you can uh, that what I was doing with my focus square. There is a bit more code in that one, so obviously it's not there, but that's the same ID. Then when we tap, well, I take the location of I don't care where the guy tap. I was just considering that the center of the screen that matter, because you have to consider it's double interaction here. Already, just for me as a developer, it's complex to know what's going to happen. I just say, no, you tap on the screen when you have a location. That's the center of the location that matters, not the tap. Where is the tap on the screen? So you have to simplify, I, I think, what this new game controller means. Then I do a hit test. And we'll see it's weird in SyncKit because you have different type of hit test. This one is about hit test in ARKit in the real world. So same thing, you throw a ray of light and you try to find existing planes that have already been detected. You find some, you take the first anchor, you create a box, then you have something like a little voodoo dance to do, but it's not really complicated. Basically what you do is like, you take the, all the information of the trend form of the anchor, and because, I don't know why, but there's probably 12 different objects to say the same thing, which is like, uh, matrices 4 by 4, CNC vector 4 by 4, CG matrix 4 by 4, and basically you just do a dance to convert them in the other one, but they mean the same thing. They're just a bunch of numbers that allow you to do a rotation and transform and so on, rotation, translation, and so on. And then I add it to my root node. So my anchor was here, so it contained all the information of where that space here compared to my root node. So now I add it, well, it's going to stay here forever, even when I move my phone. Interact with the content. So uh, once again, like I say, you can do like a gesture, you get the location in the scene, and then this time you do a hit test, it's not the same hit test. This one is a scene kit hit test, not an AR kit hit test. When you first 
try to do code completion because it's the same class. You have both of the heat tests. It's really easy to be confused. Well, no, there's just one for error kit, one for sync kit. And this one is saying, well, I have a location in my screen that I've just been tapped in 2D. Find object, not in the real world anymore, but in my scene that I've already positioned that matches ray of light once again. And then you get like one, two, three, four, whatever number of results that order in the Z index. So the closer, the, uh, the first one going to be the closer. And you get a result, which is a node. And so then you can like do something. I was saying, like, well, now the gesture are related to it. You can change the color, whatever you want to do. That's an interaction. After, you can also uh, interact, I will say, more with AR kit, not sync kit, with, like I said, the field of view of the device, uh, which is uh, what they call the inside thrust sum. So here, what you say is, like, well, I want my current scene point of view, which is the point of view is basically like, once again, like where is uh, a point in the space re regarding my device? And I'm gonna say like, what do you see in that field? Which node can you find that are in the current space of what the user is seeing? So here you had a bunch of nodes. In my case, I had one little box. And that's not necessarily an interaction in it, but that's you find an object. So after, same thing, all the gestures, the pinch, the whatever, apply to that object that you just found. And that's all. Now the limitation. Well, as I say, it sucks. You have only pla horizontal plane detection. I already know they were lazy at Apple, but not that much, because it just looked clearly the same to me. If you do like this, it looked like a ground to me, at least. So I don't know why they do that. No, I do know why they do that. There is a little thing in, UI, in AR, which is like uh, gravity. So basically, when you start a session, you assume that you want a gravity session, which means like even if your phone is here, you know where the ground is because you have sensor, you have like a geometer or whatever. Remember that thing that tells you where the ground is. So that's why it's easier for them because they know here, when you're on turn like that, they know that it should be there exactly, the ground. But it sucks, but it's an enum. So, you know, if otherwise they will have put a boolean or they're just trying to fuck with their mind again. After, it's an unstable API. So since I started to work on that talk, which is Friday, it probably have changed three times. And they just changed stuff wrong. Well, you know, wait for the golden release and pray. But that's what it is to play with beta stuff. It's also really hard to test, because in order to do that demo, it was way harder than the Sprite Kit demo. Because in Sprite Kit demo, I could do it really weirdly in my underwear at the hotel room, in the hotel room. And it was easy, like even if I didn't have space, I will project space in the void in front of the hotel, I didn't care. But for scene kit, it's hard. You need to do the ground detection. Well, you do need a ground that is detectable and you do need some space. So, and you do need to find that space. So if you say like, well, fuck, it didn't work, I wanna start again. Well, you need to detect the ground again and wait and then put your object and so on. So it's a bit like annoying to test and forget about like any UI testing on that, well, I will not do UI testing on ARKit, but, and also obviously no simulator and so on and so on. And after, well, it did work quite good right now, but it's not always good. Sometimes you have a box here and like, oh yeah, that's cool. And you're like, wait, wait where's my box here? Yeah. Oh, it's over there, yeah, of course. So it doesn't always work. And it's for real world and even like space world. So even if you put something here, you will go back and sometimes it's like, hey, just there. Well, because it's, it's hard, you know, so there's limitation. And after going further, well, there is interface, um, human interface guideline with the ARKit that are like awesome and uh, I haven't read them. And uh, from Apple that say basically you should not do this, you should not do that, don't do this and do this like this exactly. Then there's this Twitter thing with uh, made with ARKit, which is way better than my demo but it's way depressing because you're like, I'm never gonna be able to do that. And obviously there's all the WWDC sessions that are great and all the Apple docs are awesome and thank you Apple and so on and so on. And that's all. So thank you for your time. Wow, that was pretty cool. Actually, you, you made it uh, me want to do something with ARKit, but I guess I'm not the only one here. Um, because when we hear the first time about ARKit, we think about this crazy uh, second world, so to say. Yeah. But you made it very uh, 
very real. Yeah, and it's really easy, seriously. Yeah. I'm not good. I swear I suck. So You practiced a lot, tal talent is yes. overrated. Yes, yeah. I broke yeah. a lot of pot. Yeah. Do not you, smoke it. Do you want to, to, to show that last slide or not? No. Okay, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> you convinced me. You see, that's why I put it in the end. It's a funny one. Nobody knows what we're talking about. Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you show that after, yeah. uh, after the questions. Um, any questions? All right, TJ, I'm coming. I thought we were over time. Maybe no. Uh, it seems. <laughs> it seems like uh, AR Kit doesn't handle moving things very well. Like like it it wants static background. Oh yeah, if there's element moving in the real world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so for example, plant detection. Like I might have my uh, my kid that well he's moving you know a lot on the ground actually because he's crawling. <laughs> And yeah, it's true, like often like I will like uh, uh, hope I will detect something and just pass in, the f pass in the field of view and that just fucked it up. So it's true that if you have stuff moving in the scene while you're trying to detect, it will not work as well. And also like obviously if you put your hand in front of it as you said, well, the box is going to be on your hand because it's still going to be on the real position, but you have your hand in front of it, it's really weird. But they don't really do anything else than plane detection. So even if you have a bunch of stuff moving here, it doesn't matter. The object is just going to be wrong. But they will never, I mean, I assume they will not fix that. Like if you have a hand passing in front of it, like trying to say, oh, well, you have a hand in front of that box. Not now, at least. We yeah. will have to wait a little bit for that, I guess. But yeah, thanks. No question. Great. No, I'm sure there's a question. Yeah. You're not going to get out with like one question. <laughs> I make sure. really long openings. So. I'm Sorry. not sure if you, if, if you have mentioned it or, and I, I miss it. Um, can I pass the, in real world detection, I put something on, on the ground. Can I pass the information to another phone that sees the object at the exact oh, same position? Okay. Well, no, in short answer. So there is in other uh, AR device in the SLAM, which SLAM is like all the technology of AR, what they call ground truth. We can say like I'm here and not like uh, collocation style, but almost the same thing. Like that's where I am. That's a position that is absolute. In AR kit, it's just related to you. So your camera. So the other phone not going to know where that camera is. If you were to do a link with an AR anchor at a synchronized time, for example, you can imagine like you put the two phones at the exact same position and then you move them from that, but you still have this anchor point that link them, maybe. But, you know, there was way around. Um, another question in the same respect. So this means when I just put, a, put an object on the ground, yeah. switch off the telephone, go somewhere else, come back, the object is gone, right? Yeah, so the dirty little secret is like your anchor will be gone, but not necessarily the scene. So you could like technically yeah, when you go in the back one, you go back again, the scene is still there, but the anchor don't mean anything anymore because your phone has moved, but the math haven't moved. They're still at the old math, so that don't, just don't mean shit. If you were to position your content relative to just the phone itself, well, even if the phone starts to be here, it will be true because it's just in front of it, but that's not really AR. Yeah. There is probably ways around, and I'm sure Apple will like, you know, like that's what they did, for example, like um, there is some, um, I can't remember what is that techno that they, you, it's not for, uh, so BLE, for example, for Bluetooth, I just said I work on that, so I should remember. Uh, when you have a device and you communicate with it and you go in the background, you can put this mode in uh, ba background mode and you still, the device will receive information, treat them for you and call you back if there's some interesting one, for example. I could assume that if AR start to be big, Apple will want to do that. Saying like, well, even if your app is in the background, I'm going to continue saying like doing like uh, core motion processing. Then when you start back your session, I could just roll back all the math. For fast forward all the math, sorry. I guess. Yeah. So, thanks. Welcome. 
All right, um, we're going to go to the next break. Um, but um, yeah, I was just thinking, I also did uh, a, a few things with Blue, Blue PTLE here at oh. 7P. And uh, I can tell you a little bit about that sure. later. And I will soon do BLE again. So it with means that... Not with AR, yeah. which means that you will see a lot of me coming on iMessage or something like that, asking yeah. you questions. Yeah, that's what you get for knowing me. Well, um, it's too bad my phone I, screen doesn't work. I still work. wanted to press on that key because when I saw the last slide, I almost <laughs> no, died. No, no, no. What? Ah, I'm gonna cut it off. No, it's a nice slide. Yeah. He made it. He made it. I swear I didn't, I didn't. he made it. I didn't. He just edited my no. slide. He said, Hugh, I'm going to get back no. to you to be a BLE expert. No, that's what he did. And it's funny because it's just after Manu from Microsoft left. Um, that, that was for her. That's why I cut it off. All right. Um, all right. Let's take a break until, because we're running late, but it's okay until uh, like take like a uh, big 10 minutes or something like that. And I'll call you back anyway. And we'll have the last presentation. Um, from Gianluca about server-side Swift. All right, big round of applause again. Thank you for the third of the year.